Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDocBuilder.com here with, again, since you guys liked my spoiler video yesterday, we're going to do a spoiler video I have not even, I was just out to eat with Zach from MTG Alter Boy, and I told him, do not spoil any cards to me, I want to know exactly what they, uh, I want to read them for the first time here on Mythic Spoiler, and then you'll get my reaction. So, here we go, we'll start off with, with Hangerback Walker. Hangerback Walker enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. When it dies, put uh, a 1-1 one, one Thopter Artifact Creature Token with flying onto the battlefield for each plus one plus one counter on the Hangerback Walker. Put a plus one plus one counter on it. All right, this can be a little... Like, to get three counters on it, it's going to cost six mana. I think that's a little bit too rough to play. I mean, it's it's kind of cool if you have in a, a, a lot of mana, like through Tron or something like that. Because then if it... Still, I, even if you would put six six mana, you get a Worm Coil Engine, it gets two three threes. I think for six mana getting, or even putting eight mana into the hanger back walker and getting four one ones is not nearly as powerful as a death touch lifelinker. So, um, yeah, you can each turn you can put a plus one one counter on it. So even you can cast it on turn two for for just two mana and have a one one and then just start putting plus one one counters. But there was a card back in the day that already did that. Didn't see much play. All right, Necro Necromantic Summons. Put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, and then Spell Mastery if there are two or more instant or sorcery cards. The creature enters with two additional counters. We see one of these in every set. Here's one I have to pull up the English on it. Enchantment for two mana. Green, sacrifice a creature, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card, put that card in your hand, and the rest on bottom of your library if that said graveyard this thing would be of course survival of the fittest so this yeah this is basically Sur survival of the fittest um version two but what made survival of the fittest so good is what it did put let's see you oh you chose and discarded a creature card oh so it did put it in the graveyard this is says oh so you sacrifice a creature so it has to be in play that's that's the biggest difference between survival of the fittest is from the hand is a lot easier. That means you didn't have to put any uh, dump any man into it. Uh, this one it has to be on the battlefield. But you know what? Wow. Okay, evolutionary leap is perfect. This is the card that is going to tie together some of my uh, reanimation type strategies like return of the ranks and rally of the ancestors because I need some way to sacrifice creatures. I've been looking for a, a efficient way. Right now we use wall of mulch. This is better than Wall of Mulch because it allows us to go search specifically for a, or at least re, or, or reveal specifically the top of our library for another creature card, which then it, then can be sacked to get more creature cards, etc., etc., etc. So, pretty nutty card, I would say. It's definitely going to see play in the right deck. Do I think it's powerful enough to just be slammed into most green decks? No. I think it's going to take some working around. And this is, again, perfect, though, for my Rally of the Ancestors deck. It is giving me a, a card forever, well, at least for the, the life of, of Rally of the Ancestors, to have like a wall of mulch effect. So huge, huge fan of this card. It is an enchantment, so I wish Commune with, Commune with the Gods would stick around for it. But there might be other ways to tutor up um, enchantments in the, the future. Or, I mean, even at just the two mana, it's the exact same as wall of mulch. Uh, we're we're gonna lose uh, with with Dramaka's command. I don't know. It might be a little bit weaker than Wall of Mulch, and Wall of Mulch can also block. But I'm loving this card. Great card. All right. So so far so good with the spoilers. The spoiler of the souls of souls. The spoiler of souls can't block. Exile two other creature cards from your graveyard. Return the spoilers. The spoiler of souls from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's not too bad. Just two mana for a 3-1. And then you get to exile two other creature cards from your grave and return it. Has a nice little recursion theme to it. Uh, we did see the white um, hallowed, hallowed something, whatever, the exiles cards if they weren't cast. Um, a creature card then into the battlefield this turn. So it will have some hate for that. I don't know. I think that the Bloodsoak Champion might be a little bit better, a 2-1. All you have to do is attack with the creature to recur it. But I'm, I'm sure this might see some some play in, in some grindy matches. It could make it into like a mono blacklist. I think mono black wants a two drop for, for double black, and a three one's not bad in a mono black type type of aggro strategy. But it, it again, it seems like it, it might take a little more work than just reading this. Historically, cards like this have seen play in their respected formats. Talent of the Telepath. Target opponent reveals the top seven cards of his library. You may cast an insert surgery card from among them without paying its mana cost. And then that player puts the rest into his graveyard. So it's also it also mills. That's kind of cool. Spell mastery. 
you may cast up to two. <laughs> okay, this card is bonkers. This card is absolutely bonkers. This reminds me of Bribery. So Bribery is a, a card in Commander that is just really, really insane when you have like three or four opponents to choose from. Someone is going to be playing the really degenerate creature deck that has like an eight mana creature card or like a Blightsteel Colossus in it. And you just use Bribery. Bribery does get to search their library. This you're, you're kind of banking on the top seven having a, a instant or sorcery that's worth, worth casting. But in, in today's format, with the commands, with uh, cards like Dig Through Time and Treasure Cruise, Talent of the Telepath is going to be... The only problem I have with this is it is Sorcery Speed. If it's instant, it might put it over the top. But still, that's that's not too shabby against Mirror decks to steal their Dig Through Time. And especially if you have two or more instant spells, that's an Anticipate and something else in your graveyard. That's not hard to do. Can you imagine casting like... A dig through time and a treasure cruise off this, or an Ojitai's command and a treasure cruise, or just there's plenty of other things that we can we can uh, even even out of even green and red decks to casting a stoke the flames off of this. I'm really liking this card a lot. Will it 100% see play? Probably not, but it's going to be one of those sideboard cards that like deflecting palm that can get you out of nowhere. And loving this talent of the telepath. Animist Awakening. Reveal the top X cards of your library. Put all land cards from among them onto the battlefield tapped and the rest on the bottom of your library. If there are two or more instant sorcery cards in your graveyard, untap those lands. This card, again, seems incredibly powerful. This is an amazing ramp type strategy. It will go great with like Corsair Crucifix or any sort of scry effect that it kind of guarantees that you have lands on top. But I'm thinking there's some cards out of Legacy and in Modern that actually put cards uh, on put specific land cards on top of your library. So I wonder if there is a card kind of like the um, uh, the creature one that allows you to put three creatures on top of your library that allows you to put... I, I swear there's a card back in the day that says put any number of lands on top of your library. That would be pretty bonkers with this guy. You do have to have X mana though, so maybe best case scenario is you, if you if you dump four lands into this or four mana into this, you're able to get uh, three lands and then it goes so in, in that aspect maybe it, it's not ramping as much as you want it to be but i mean going from a four to like an eight drop so on on turn four getting three more lands into play and then turn five casting an ugin that's that seems pretty good to me so animus awakening is another brew card that will take some work that won't just be slammed into their deck and again those are my favorite type of cards all right priest of the blood rite Human Cleric 2-2 for 5. When Priest of the Blood Rite enters the battlefield, put a 5-5 uh, Black Demon creature token flying on the battlefield that gets countered by the white spell. <laughs> but uh, every interrupt, you lose 2 lives. So you get a 5-5 Demon and a 2-2 for 5 mana. There's a, a lot better things to do in the format. The, only, the real cool thing about this, though, is if you do Bounce or Flicker this guy, you're getting a lot of value. You're getting a 5-5 Demon every time you do that. So, I mean, we've seen Blade Splice be flick, flickered a lot to get... Like through Restoration Angel or for, through Flicker Wisp to get more 3 threes. This is a whopping 5 5 black demon creature token. The only problem I have about this is it's being printed in a set that specifically has a hate card for this. And losing two life per turn is is actually pretty relevant. And the steep five mana casting cost is also pretty relevant. So I mean there are five fives for five mana that already exist in in standard that have a little bit of a higher value than i believe this guy i mean this is a, of course going to be a limited bomb and i'm sure there's going to be some shenanigans to come with this card through flickering and and whatnot but uh pretty cool card by design i don't think it's going to quite see standard playable um once again we'll, we'll bring this guy up here we have disciple of the ring another five mana exile and or sorcery card from your graveyard choose one counter target non-creature spell unless the controller pays two or Disciple of Ring gets plus one, plus one until the turn. So you get to choose one, okay? Or tap target creature or untap target creature. That's pretty sweet. It's got a lot of abilities to it. Again, I, it does remind me of the Ojitai Exemplars uh, with a lot of different options. But you do, one, have to have an, an instant or sorcery card in your graveyard in a format that wants instant or sorceries in your graveyard for delve and just other things. So it's kind of competing with your delve slots. And I just don't quite know if it is 
quite there to be standard playable. It's a mythic too, which I think as a mythic needs to be a little more powerful. I mean, tapping on tapping creatures, um, getting plus one plus one, I guess is okay. Kind of feels like a psychotog in that in that way. Then it does have that activation cost of one, so there is going to be a limit of how many times you can do that per turn, especially with how many cards you have in your graveyard. But cool design. This is one of those cards we'll have to wait and see. Under the the right uh, brewer's hands or player's hand, I'm sure this card is going to be a very powerful card. And limited, of course, it's a mythic. It's going to be powerful. So pretty pretty decent card all all in all. All right. So Abbot of Carol Keep. We have Prowess, 2 mana for 2-1. That's powerful. That's a powerful ability on just a 2-1 for 2 mana. When Alba of the Curl Keep enters the Battlefield XL top card library, until in turn you may play that card. Pretty sweet if it's a land. Again, this will have some good synergy with Corsair of Crew Fix. If you haven't played a land this turn, say on your, on your turn 3, and you haven't played a land that could get a land off the top. And the problem, though, and in late game, this, this card actually becomes a pseudo draw card spell. So it's not dead dead. If you draw it turn 5 or turn 6, you can find like a lightning strike off the top and at least get value out of it in that way. So it's basically like casting a lightning strike and getting a 2-1 body out of it for 4 mana. That's not too terrible. I think this this will go... This this might see some standard play in a few decks. The, the main key keyword here is the prowess. As a 2 mana in red with... We, it doesn't have haste, but just a 2 mana for 2-1. With Pro S is quite powerful. Give this guy up to a 4-3 very easily, a, a 3-2 very easily. And yeah, it, it's it's definitely a great, great ability. See if there was anything else we missed from yesterday. Oh wow, there there is a couple cards. We have we have Guy's Revenge. Guy's Revenge has haste, cannot be countered, seven mana. Can't be the target of, of non-green spells or abilities from non-green sources. That's a pretty powerful card. Uh, not a lot of ways in green to actually kill creatures. We have a few fight effects. But other than that, this guy's going to be getting in. It could be a great finisher in a green deck. And we have a Gideon's Phalanx. Uh, seven mana. Put four 2-2 two, two white soldier creature tokens with Vigilance on the battlefield. It is an instant. And then they gain Indestructible if you have Spell Mastery. Yeah, I just think that we already have a better token generating um, in the form of Secure the Wastes. These are 2-2s, two but seven mana is quite a steep casting cost. And I, I don't quite, like, we, we have seen, again, the Revel, here we go, the example in the the, the, the Saras here, we have the Revel of the Fallen God, which has put four 2-2 two, two Hasters for the exact same mana. The mana cost is a little bit uh, steeper, but I, I say those are pretty comparable abilities. Uh, the Gideon's Phalanx being a little bit more powerful, but it, it to me, it just doesn't seem like it, especially with Elspeth in the format, I don't think this guy will see see much play. It could surprise me though. I've seen I've seen things in the past that we didn't think was going to see play see a lot more play. So we'll go on to this card: a Scrab Clan Berserker, three mana creature, human Berserker, haste, uh, renown. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, is Scab Clan Berserker is is renowned. Scab Clan Berserker deals two dam uh, two damage to that player. Non-creature spell. This reminds me again. Yeah, Eidolon. Eilon, Mind Sparker, Ash Zealot type abilities, sure. We isn't there a big dude, a Rouse no, not Rouse Eric. This ogre dude out of Dragon's Maze. The six mana that does a similar thing, but I think it does three damage whenever you cast a spell, or does it do six damage? Rule Tharok, what is his name? I can't remember the, the guy's name, the ogre. But and and it it saw some play in standard. This is a lot easier to cast it. 2-2 two, two becomes a 3-3 three, three quite easily. That's that's a pretty decent... Yeah, th this card's sweet. I like it. It it could see play in one of those higher converted mana cost uh, red aggro strategies. I don't think they quite... Maybe they do want it as something to round you out in a, a red deck wins type strategy. It could be the quite... Th this card, again, will be uh, determined by what other cards we have to work around it and just the metagame in general. If there's people casting a lot of spells... Because this basically does have that kind of Thunderbreak Regent clause to it that it's going to take two damage to kill it. So if they decide to uh, ultimate price this guy, it's going to at least cost them two damage. And this only affects opponents. I believe the Rule Tharok actually affected both players. So you can still feel free to cast your Lightning Strikes and whatnot. So there's some pretty sweet spoilers. Again, let me know what you think about the cards that I spoiled. Let me know any mistakes I made. I'm sure I read over them pretty quickly, but 
This is still looking to be an amazing set. I am so stoked for this Howled Moonlight. Myself and Zach uh, from MG Ultra Boy were talking about Howled Moonlight and even thinking about more ways this card actually affects the metagame and how many this there's so many decks in modern that this will at least it won't be a dead card if you if you have it in your hand you can still draw a card you can still just cycle this away and there are plenty of decks this is main boardable i think just for the cycling ability and how many decks just cheat things into play uh through reanimating them through just putting them into play with aether vial through flickering them and the howled moonlight shuts down all of them so anywho great spoilers looking forward to this set i haven't been excited about a core set like this in a long time i know that i get excited for all of my spoiler sets they're all the greatest set ever but this one is really looking out to be a, a, a very very decent set this has been kevin with rogue deck thanks for watching